improvement has just been tremendous from you know where it was three years ago completion percentage passer rating decision making production it's just it's just gone you know. um, it, it's risen at a really remarkable rate it's just remarkable how how good he has become you know, last year this year he's built on that you know what it was when he came into the league uh, but he's really made you know tremendous improvement and you know, has a lot of command of the offense. They audible a lot. They change things. They obviously have a lot of confidence in him. He handles them well, handles them well on the line. They rarely run a bad play um, or, you know, you know where they, they run into, you know, a, a bad look or a blitz or something like that. He doesn't get fooled much by anything. Um, it's really, really impressive to watch how, how he's developed there. And that, Chris Sims, as you know, Qualifies his enthusiasm on the part of Bill Belichick uh, in reference to <laughs> Josh Allen, uh, his uh, quarterback counterpart, if you will, is uh, he's going to be trying to contain him on Monday night. Um, I can barely contain myself when it comes to anointing the Patriots as the best team in the AFC, and but the Bills will have their say uh, in the matter with two games against the Patriots in the next uh, four games. Not to mention one with the Buccaneers. But I want to hone in on your guy, Chris Sims, Josh Allen. Like his stats are good. His stats are, are good, uh, not as good as last year, but that's not saying much given how brilliant he was last year. How would you evaluate his play this year? Already as many interceptions all, this season as he had all the last season. Yeah, it's still been really good. You know, it has. Um, you know, the, the thing he, for me is, without a doubt, one of the three, four best quarterbacks in football. You know, still the most, uh, maybe the most talented quarterback in the game right now. You know, again, I, I haven't done quarterback rankings or anything like that, but, you know, he's about as capable of carrying a team with just his own physical ability as anybody in football, really. I mean, he might be number one as far as that's concerned. Yeah, it's not been as good. Of course, they were really good last year. You guys know how the story works. You're really good. Teams study you. They try to figure you out a little bit more that way. All right, so the league is caught on maybe to the offensive attack. And then, hey, you guys are watching football. It's hard to put up the stats he did last year when there's just no run game and the pass protection is not that great. And what I argue with people a lot is trying to tell them that the weapons in Buffalo are not all that in a bag of chips. Like, Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen are. But, like, Cole Beasley, okay, he's a, he's a good number three or number four receiver. All right, Emmanuel Sanders, there's a reason he's on his third team in three years, and he's in year 12. He's not like a mismatched nightmare. So between all of that, yeah, it can make some moments tough sledding when it's just all about Josh Allen week after week after week. Man, I'm so excited for this game, though, Chris. I, I, I was telling somebody earlier today, I know we had a lot of hype around Buccaneers, Patriots, Tom Brady returns to Gillette Stadium. And that was week four. So the Buccaneers were different than the Patriots were different than I actually think this is a more compelling game on the field without the history. It clearly doesn't have the history of, of Brady versus the Patriots. What do you expect to see from this game uh, on, on both sides? Well, I, you know, I mean, one, I think it's going to be tough on Josh Allen for the reasons that I just explained. It's a great defense in New England. I mean, they're great. And we know how great they are when they don't have to worry about defending one area of offense where, you know, they're not going to have to put a whole lot of eggs into the let's stop the run game basket. They're not. They're going to be able to overplay, you know, the pass game in a lot of ways. So, therefore, I look at it and go, okay, what can Brian Dayball, the offensive coordinator in Buffalo, devise that, you know, can, can give the unexpected to the Patriots and, and, and both Belichick's? And then I also look at it and just go, I think Josh Allen's going to have to just make some jaw-dropping jaw plays for them to win the game. I do, you know, because first off, as good as Buffalo's defense is, this is not the type of defense I think they're, I mean, type of offense I think they're going to be great against. See, I think New England, in a lot of ways, can replicate what the Tennessee Titans and the Indianapolis Colts did to that Bills defense. Bills defense is not real big. And the Colts and the Titans were able to push them around. And therefore, the Bills had to overplay the run game. And teams like the Colts, the Titans, and the Patriots, they have enough of a pass game, although it might not be the best in, the fo in football. It's enough to go, if you overplay the run to this extent, 
We're still good enough in the past game to give you issues there. And they have no Tredavious White to go along with that. So, yeah, I tend to lean to the Patriots winning this matchup. But agree with you, Holly, in the fact that, you know, hey, the Brady story was amazing. But I think this being the AFC East battle up in Buffalo, I think Buffalo thought they were going to be the kings of this division for more than just one year. And they're looking at it going, damn, they're breathing down our neck already here and and playing better all around team football at this point in the season. And I think it's going to lead to an intense game for sure. One quarterback that I, I know you weren't particularly high on coming out of last year's draft and I admittedly um, made up my mind. It was some confirmation bias. I wasn't hiring him either, uh, despite how highly touted he was. Uh, talking about Tua Tonga Valoa. Um, and it was some confirmation bias at the end. Um, instead of, you know, common sense would have said, hey, just wait and see, give the kid a little bit more time. Tua's looked good lately. He looks like he's getting better. I, what are you seeing? He, he definitely is. I mean, he's, he's playing good. He's playing within himself. I think that's the most important thing. I mean, they're playing out of this world defense right now in Miami. And I think they figured out the formula of how to play with Tua on the offensive side of the ball. You know, they've gotten a little more creative on that side of the ball. You know, you watch them. It's speed sweeps and reverses and screens. And they kind of spread you out horizontally. And then... They run the ball or Tua throws a ball eight, ten yards down the middle. That's kind of how they play right now. You know, but you're not going to see him like, see here, there it is right there. Hey, little eight-yard slant route, Jalen Waddle runs. Now you're going to see this ball over the middle again. Boom. Hey, good quick release, got the ball on him, all of that. Do I think Tua's ever going to be able to, like, to carry a team like Josh Allen or Aaron Rodgers to do that? No, but you can win with Tua. You can. You just got to you gotta play a certain way that fits him, you know? And look, these highlights are kind of like, you know, accentuating my point here, you know, because you don't see a lot of big down-the-field throws. That's about as deep right. as it's going to get right but there. Gotta, I'm like they, the 10, 12-yard... They got to get a better offensive line. He doesn't have a great offensive they line. They got to get a better they offensive have a great line. Game. Sure. And his receivers have been in sure. and out, uh, aside from Waddle. So it's like, it's not like his... It's not like the team around him has been uh, the best supporting cast. Either. No. So there's that. I, I, I don't, I, I'm with you. And again, here, this is what I always go back to. You know, first off, he's a product of everybody else's misevaluation. So he gets a lot of crap because he was the fifth pick of the draft and he right. hasn't Burrow looked like the Herbert. fifth pick of the draft. And of course, and Justin Herbert has, right. The problem is he was overdrafted. That's what I was trying to argue with people through the whole process, you know. And that's not his fault. That's a lot of the evaluator's fault. And just falling into the trap of, oh, Alabama quarterback, he's got to be a top five pick. So they fell into that. You know, his stats are really good right now. But if you looked at where he threw the ball in that, and I could show you the spray chart as far as where he threw the game. I don't think he threw a pass past 20 yards the whole game. So they found what's worked for him. And it doesn't always have to be a superstar quarterback for you to win. That's what I argue. It's the greatest team sport in the world. And we sit there and always boil it down to one guy. Nick Foles won a Super Bowl. He's a third-string quarterback right now. Blake Bortles went to the AFC Championship game. He's not in the NFL. Jared Goff is the worst starting quarterback in football, and he went to the Super Bowl. What? You don't need to be the best. Yes, you know? So that's where I just argue with people a little bit because I know I was a down on Tua coming out in the draft, but let's not go crazy and just give up on the guy. Yeah, like sure. you said, let's support him a little. Let's let him play a little. He's not going to be the superstar everybody want him to be, but I do think you can win with him. I do. You know, uh, we, we're still uh, getting, we're family, uh, Chris Simpson. We're still getting to know each other as brothers. So I'll tell you about your brother, Mike Smith. You may not know this. Uh, he likes Splash, and I, I've tried to help him out with this. You know, he doesn't always go with what's best for him. He goes with what's, what's the, what the shiniest object is. So he likes big names. Uh, He likes red carpets. He likes that kind of stuff. So he is drawn (laughs) to the L.A. Rams. So he's in the right church, wrong pew, because what he should be drawn to, the kind of uh, uh, team building he should be drawn to is what's happening in San Francisco. Last time we were on, uh, maybe a few weeks ago, we talked about the 49ers and said, what's wrong with the 49ers? Now I'm going to ask you, what's right about the power running, taking names, San Francisco 49ers using Debo Samuel as a weapon what is going right with the 49ers and why are they uh, on a little bit of a streak right now? 
I, you know, one, they got healthy. I think that's the biggest thing, right? They had some injuries. George Kittle was, you know, out of the lineup. Their offensive line was banged up. They were missing some running backs. Elijah Mitchell being back helps them. Defensive side of the ball banged up as well, you know. And, and unfortunately, they're a little banged up this week going into Seattle once again. And they had a little bit of that disease of just messing situations up, dropping punts. Hey, they lose to the Cardinals and Colt McCoy. Kittle fumbles on a big pass play down the middle. Brandon Ayuk catches the ball at the five-yard line, falls down on the ground, gets up, looks like he's going to score. He fumbles. The Cardinals get the ball back. So they were doing some dumb things. But I think between the health and Shanahan got his groove as far as how he wanted to play with this offense and the Debo Samuel thing being, of course, the biggest thing. But there's, there's not a better run game designer maybe in the history of the NFL, than Kyle Shanahan. He's as good as it gets. You know, he is going to crack the code at some point about what your defense is doing during the week of preparation, and he's going to come up with five or six runs that aren't going to be like, oh, that's a nice little thing. It's going to be like, whoa, what the hell was that? Who are these guys? And I've got my head going everywhere. Jimmy Garoppolo is playing better. Bosa has gotten healthy And he's kicking butt on that side of the ball. So I think it's all coming together. And Holly and and Michael Smith, like, listen, I'm a Rams fan too. I like that. Uh, But I think the 49ers can win the Super Bowl. I do think they have enough talent to do that. I, 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 yeah, I do. I look at the top six seeds in the NFC and really all look at them as capable Super Bowl winners. Now, they're not all as good as the Cardinals and the Bucks, but I still think this 49ers team is a Super Bowl caliber team and, and got it rolling right now. Man, hey, Mike, it just got real. That just got real, man. One of those top six teams is in action tonight. Um, And I'm glad you got your NFL history book open, Chris, because that leads me to what I wanted to ask you about uh, Micah Parsons. Uh, I, you know, I don't want to say unprecedented because I I don't want to shortchange anybody. But I don't recall uh, an off the ball first and second down linebacker being such a dynamic pass rusher off the edge on the third on third down as when I say dynamic according to pro football focus not just rookies Michael Parsons is the highest rated pass rusher among all players right now so it's defensive rookie of the year he's looked like he's running away with that he may be in a running for defensive player of the year at this point and tonight he gets a Saints team minus both tackles and they get Demarcus Lawrence back I would love to know, you know, look, you, you, you've seen a lot of great pass rushers. Hell, just go back to, 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 to Big Phil's old teammate, starting with the greatest of all time in LT. I love to know how is this kid able to be so dynamic, both off the ball and off the edge? Usually it's one or the other. Maybe you might be able to do both competently, but not both exceptionally well. Who, who's ever done that? Right. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, I, it's... Listen, I'm not going to put anybody in Lawrence Taylor's class, right? You know, I just oh, I, I saw was, it for I wasn't too many doing years. That. And a, oh, no, I wasn't no, doing no, that. No, no, I, I, I know, I know what you were saying. <laughs> I know, yeah, okay. I know. Okay. And listen, yeah. but I don't know. It's not that far behind Lawrence Taylor and what he was as a rookie and, you know, some of the stories my dad has told me and everything. I mean, this guy's a freak of nature. And I, Michael Smith, I'm glad you said this. I had to do a video early on today, you know, with NBC and, and points bet. Uh, sports book who we're involved with and we did a little like defensive player of the year conversation and Trayvon Diggs was like one of the top of the list like he was third or fourth and I went oh my gosh I'll throw up if Trayvon Diggs is defensive player of the year I mean yeah he gets interceptions but he gets burnt a whole lot like toast a whole lot too so that's crazy Michael Parsons deserves to be in the defensive player of the year conversation to your point first off he's Big and physical, right? You can see he's got a pair of legs and arms on him that just, they translate to any era, any position on the football field. But I don't know. It is rare. I can't really pinpoint a guy that I could say, wow, when he's a stand-up middle linebacker, he's definitely one of the three or four best at that. And then, wow, when he goes to pass rusher, he's one of the five best pass rushers in football? Uh, it's, it's, it's freaky stuff, man. And forget defensive rookie of the year. He already won that. They should send that yeah. to him now and get that over with. <laughs> I like what you're saying. To me, he should be in the Miles Garrett, um, 
Miles Garrett, yeah. Nick Bosa, TJ Watt, defensive Aaron player Donald, of the yeah. year conversation. Yeah. yeah. No doubt. No doubt. All right, brother, man. We appreciate it. And uh, hey, a little surprise for you before we let you go because we take care of our people. We take care of family. Um, we've been working on this really hard, try to make people comfortable when they join our show. We appreciate all the time you spend with us. And so at long last, Chris, we give you. You're ready. There it yeah. is. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> there the is. Oreo cookie. <laughs> what up, baby? What up? And listen, I like the cookie part better than the cream. So just to let you know, I like the cookie part better than the cream. But yeah, for this, a, this, I gotta be this the a, cream. I like this. This is a, I'll be honest, this is kind of a bootleg <laughs> Oreo. This is like this is kind of like a, if you if you took traditional Oreo and vanilla Oreo and mixed it. Yeah, because yeah. Chris, I'm like right, I'm right between you and Michael. I mean, it's not really an Oreo, but I'm not gonna spoil the fun here. I mean, you're definitely the cream, but you know, I'm like, I'm a little we too have, to be, you know. <laughs> I, yes. I tell you, we gotta have it's a, a three shaded Oreo. Yeah, look, we gotta have a conversation at another time. It may have to be offline about why you like the cookie more than the cream. Let, let's not go there right now. Let's not get into it right now. But I think you're, you're making a big. That's it. That's a bigger statement than hey, the 49ers can win the Super Bowl. That's why Chris fits in so well here. That's why that's why we love us. That's our Chris. dude. That's our Be brother. Good, Peace. You. you guys are the best. See ya. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.